The situation is dire in Ukraine. Ammunition shortages are critically disrupting operations. Ukraine's insufficient supply of ammunition means its soldiers can't hit the targets they want with even their most effective weapons, a US veteran now fighting in Ukraine told Business Insider. Such weapons include the US-made high-mobility artillery rocket systems, with soldiers unable to use it to hit the same targets that they could earlier in the war when they had more munitions available. The veteran Jonathan Pocket told Business Insider. He said his unit had good support from HIMARS, a long-range, high-precision rocket launcher that can hit targets 50 miles away, but its effectiveness was degraded as rockets ran low. Pocket is a sniper with chosen Chosen Company, part of Ukraine's 59th Motorized Brigade. Chosen Company is made up of international soldiers now fighting for Ukraine, and while it's technically a reconnaissance unit, it also does frontline assault operations and defensive work. He said that when he was not on missions, he would look at satellite imagery on computers, looking for targets, looking for batteries, artillery batteries that needed to get hit, looking for convoys, possible supply points of the Russians. He would then bring those targets to the Ukrainian HIMARS operator, who would then start the military's verification process to confirm the target and see if it was worth a hit. The next step would be to send off a rocket and boom, boom, target eliminated. Done. That was earlier in the conflict, though. The supply of rockets began to dry up in October when Russia launched a new offensive in Ukraine's eastern Donetsk region and when Republicans in Congress started stalling billions of U.S. aid. As the supply situation at the front worsened, Pocket was often told we're not really interested in those type of targets right now when he would present potential strike options. That shift he explained, was because we're running out of rockets. The unit started getting more and more selective with their targets, he explained. For example, they stopped trying to hit Russian training areas. They were once a good target, as that's where you generally have a collection of troops. And so, for one missile that impacts, you might take out 30 guys. So at that point, it's really efficient. Ukraine is running critically low on supplies, including ammunition for artillery and air defenses. Many experts and Western officials have said that the situation is dire for Ukraine and that it could lose the war to Russia if it does not receive sufficient support. Russia may transfer fighter jets and air defense equipment to Iran. Russia is considering providing Iran with modern fighter jets and air defense equipment to protect it from Israeli and U.S. attacks. Military cooperation between Moscow and Tehran has reached a new level, reports the Washington Post. According to the data, Iran has opened a new dangerous chapter in its relations with Russia by agreeing to supply thousands of combat drones and missiles in 2022 to help Moscow in its war against Ukraine. The expanded ties helped cement deals between Moscow and Tehran, including Russia's promise to provide its ally with modern fighter jets and air defense technology that could help Tehran bolster its defenses against any future Israeli or U.S. airstrike. It is unclear how many systems have been delivered and deployed, but the Russian technology could turn Iran into a much more formidable adversary with enhanced capabilities to shoot down aircraft and missiles, officials and experts say. The arms deals, some of the details of which have not been previously disclosed, are part of a broader cooperation that includes joint production of military drones in Russia, sharing of jamming technology and real-time assessments of weapons deployed against NATO and in Ukraine, intelligence officials and arms experts said. According to them, this cooperation brings significant benefits to both countries while elevating Iran's status from a junior ally to a strategic partner. Intelligence officials said that Russia is pushing forward with secretly concluded deals to supply Iran with Su-35, one of Russia's most powerful fighter bombers. On the defense side, Iran has long been asking Russia for the latest anti-aircraft missile batteries to protect its nuclear and military facilities from a possible US or Israeli attack. 
In 2007, Tehran signed a deal to buy the Russian S-300 anti-aircraft system, but Moscow postponed the delivery of the weapon due to pressure from the United States and European states. The voluntary ban ended in 2016 and Iranian S-300s became operational in 2019. Since then, Iran has sought to acquire the more powerful Russian S-400 system, although it is not publicly known whether Moscow has taken steps to supply S-400 batteries. Some S-400 variants are equipped with radars capable of countering stealth technologies used by modern military aircraft. According to intelligence officials, Moscow also benefits from this cooperation. In addition to the thousands of drones purchased from Iran late last year, Russia agreed to buy about $2 billion worth of additional military goods, including anti-drone defense systems, which have become a top priority for Russian generals in Ukraine. Russian army is making gains in the east of Ukraine. Russian troops have advanced to Okoretny, Berdychev settlements in the direction of Avdiivska city in eastern Donetsk region, Deep State Telegram Channel reported. Russians also advanced to Staromayorsky settlement near Vuldar and Krasnoharivka cities near Marinka in Donetsk region, the channel reported. Russia's advances on the front line have caused concerns among Ukraine's allies as well. Yesterday Pentagon warned of Russia's gains on the front line. In a presser on Monday, Pentagon Press Secretary Pat Ryder said the situation was dire in Ukraine. You've got Russian forces that are making some gains on the front line. And it's absolutely essential that we get Ukraine what they need to include air defense capabilities so that they can check Russian aggression, defend their territory, and ultimately, take back their sovereign territory. So we're going to continue to work very hard towards that end, Ryder said. The Pentagon official said it was important that the Congress pass the supplemental to ensure Ukraine gets the volume and level of support that they need to sustain the fight. Last week, Mikhailo Podolyak, a senior advisor to Volodymyr Zelensky said that Ukraine was running out of critical munitions and was urgently seeking help from its allies to tackle threat from Russia. He said the situation on the front line was critical as Russia was adopting new tactics of attacking power stations with up to 10 or 12 missiles at a time bypassing already stretched Patriot and other missile shields, 